All right, and we're live. Hey, welcome everyone to the designer show today. We're running a little bit late, so my apologies for that. But you know, it is Monday, right? Uh, oh no, that's right. It's not. Uh, it will be soon enough. <clears throat> anyway, see a few people are chiming in. Doug, welcome. Thanks for joining us. We got Heis. Thanks for being here. Jerry, Carl, nice to see you. Well, we don't see you, but nice that you're here. Thank you. <clears throat> and there's rabbit design. All right, cool. Um, Doug, looks like you might have some questions. So, um, so you guys, this is just a kind of open forum day today. So we're just going to have some fun answering questions, uh, chatting a little bit. We've got a new face on here today. His name is Kevin Transu. Kevin, thank you for being here. Um, everybody else, I think you already Thanks know Renee. Uh, John, I think we'll be here. I haven't heard from him. So, and Renee, uh, Robin won't be here because she teaches in her Portland Community College on Friday mornings and Friday afternoons. So uh, she'll be, she won't be with us for a couple of months. I think she does that. So she teaches chief architect in the community college. So pretty cool. Um, so Renee, if you could kind of keep your eye on the chat too, I'll, I'll do my best. John okay. usually does that for me, but uh, We'll do that. And so when there's questions, we'll do that. Doug says, now that's a mug. Which one are you talking? Who are you talking about? I think he's talking about that one. <laughs> oh, that is a mug. I never got that I'm all, one. I'm all swagged I, I just, out. <laughs> I just used my Cheap cup care. with the green screen on it. Um, <laughs> anyway. Nice. So cool. Uh, again, thanks for being here. Uh, we'll have some fun here in just a second. I want to talk a little bit. And one of the reasons I asked Kevin to come on the show today is um, Kevin and I met quite a while ago. Let me, I want to just share my screen here. Give me a second. And um, I think it was 2014. Yeah. Let me just go to the right place and turn on. Give me a second. I'm doing a little bit different arrangement here today. Um, stream. I'm going to share my screen present share screen and we're going to share the screen cool all right so kevin and i just went to uh, dc a while ago so got a ton of pictures here but i want to take you way back this is in my online photos to 2014 and this is yeah 2014 kevin came to an event i was having in las vegas uh, i wanted to go do uh, some, some builder show and i wanted to do some chief architect training and I thought, oh, what the hell? I'll just, uh, I didn't want to do a conference room. So I rented a big house with nine bedrooms, put out the word and uh, filled it up with uh, some really cool chief architect people. And we just kind of came in and we did the training at the house. We spent the week together, went to the builder show and we had a ball. And that's Kevin right there with the spatula, getting ready to cook some uh, food. That was quite an event that's that right. we had there. I'm here, I'm right here then. Oh, you did, look at that, wow. But that was our first event, and I had never planned this before. So we got there. Uh, I don't remember what day it was. And we're kind of looking at each other. What's for dinner? <laughs> I didn't even think about that. Um, so we all went out to the grocery store, and I think we filled up three carts of groceries and brought them all back to the house. And lo and behold, there we were having our dinner. So spent a bunch of time at the Builder Show. So I did a Google photo search for Kevin, and... These are some of the pictures that have come up. So, Kevin, how many of how many of my live events have you been to now, over the years? Uh, I think eight. Is that right? Uh, it sounds Maybe. about right. If you, I, it depends on if we count the cord lane things or not. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's a nice picture. Use that one. Um, <laughs> that's right. You were in Minnesota. So anyway, I won't do, uh, I won't bore people with all these pictures. But we've got a little bit of history here, and Kevin. What I brought, I asked Kevin to come on because he is going to uh, be attending our summit in, <laughs> I love that picture. <laughs> and uh, Kevin's new company, The Art of Design, is uh, something that he's been working on for a long time. And uh, I'm, I'm really for, feel blessed that, that he's going to come and join us and, and anybody that's at our summit will uh, feel the same way once they once they meet you kevin so kevin if you could tell me and tell everybody here a little bit about uh what's happened over the years from these live events just give us a brief oh uh, well, 
the reason the reason that I've been to at least eight of them with you is because of the value in those events. It's phenomenal. Uh, uh, not only in you know Dan's the undisputed leader in in being able to uh, teach the technology of Chief, which is wonderful, um, but the but the interaction with everyone at these events is has. Uh, opened my world. Uh, I have now friends, associates, peers uh, all over the country, uh, a little bit spanning into the rest of the rest of the world. And it's been um, illuminating to be a part of the events and then to be able to carry that forward to the point where that I sometimes speak or present at the events and, and you know, give my my view as well. Um, it's an invaluable resource, both from the networking side and from the education side. Yeah, it's been cool to have you there. And um, I'm going to get to the right screen here. <clears throat> yeah, and, and you know, you've shared a lot of wisdom with everybody over the years. So um, again, I'm really excited to have you come to the to the, to the uh, summit that we're having starting in February. And speaking of that summit, I just want to mention to everybody that um, it's, uh, come on, am I sharing my screen? I'm doing this all from one screen right now. Am I sharing my screen? Yes. No. Yeah. No. Okay. No. I, I got you. This is where I need John. He's supposed to. I got you. Oh. You got me? Am I sharing my screen? There we go. There you are. Okay. There you are. Um, let me get to the right screen here. So when we uh, talk about the summit, uh, I just want to talk about it briefly. I won't spend a bunch of time on it. Um, it's a two-week deal. There's two one-week events. Week two, the rooms are sold out. So there are no more rooms available, but I do have one space available for a guy in the bunk room. And we have four spots available for those staying elsewhere. So if you live nearby or if you have a place you can stay nearby, you're welcome to join us too. And we have special pricing on that. So if you scroll down a little bit further, you'll see that. So we've got a little bit of availability in week two. This is the kind of the more advanced week when we'll have a bunch of advanced people there. And again, uh, Will and you know, Renee and Robin and John and I will be there all both weeks. Oh, we'll, we'll be doing advanced stuff in week one. Oh, Don't worry, week one. Well, I know. Um, all I'm saying is uh, in week one, uh, the class that I do with John, we'll go a little bit slower because we'll have more intermediate users there. Um, still teach a lot of the same things, a lot of same tips and technology. And yeah, we'll in that week, you, you'll go away with so much information that make your head explode in a good way, not a bad way. So we still have six rooms available. In week one, <clears throat> I have three spots available in the what I'm calling the mini dorm room. Uh, it's a bunk room, and then four of the uh, class only uh, uh, spots. And the class only means you could come for all seven days. You'll get all the meals, you get everything, plus you get the classes. So it's really a value at that for all the training that you're going to get. Um, so check it out. Um, there's links below this uh, video that you can. Uh, click on and go check it out. So any, Renee, you got anything you want to add about the summit? Um, you've got the duplicitous effect right now. Uh, it gives someone I, vertigo. I know I got to <laughs> quit doing this. Um, uh, my, my notes are, uh, well, just <clears throat> the, the in between moments outside of the classroom when you've got to be kind of on, well, when you get to just kind of decompress, there's going to be people all around you that have insight in the industry. They have their own business practices that they might be sharing with you. There's just going to be conversations that'll be fun, funny, enjoyable, and we'll get into all kinds of really, you know, cool stuff in terms of yeah, how, world working, stuff. how we might be able to benefit you, that kind of thing. Yeah. I, I live for this. I'm going to be on fire this whole time. I know I am. I'm just, you know, I like being around people in this industry. So it's, yeah. it's, um, it's fun and give you more content than you can even take, bring a good notepad system somehow. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. So it, it, yeah, it's a cool event. So if you're available and you can make it by the way, Jeff Rexford, congratulations, dude! Yeah. So you just got Rex. married. Ah, oh, nice, there you go, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I was wondering if you'd be on our show today, so I could say congratulations. Way to go! All right. So uh, I just posted, added a note here uh, about your chief questions. If you guys aren't going to ask any questions, we're going to go spin the wheel. Okay. Ah, <gasps> look who arrived. John. Hey. Hey. Hi, John. <laughs> Hi. <clears throat> I forgot right. what day it was. It's Monday, isn't it? <laughs> I think it is. 
I see Dan's using a green screen. Renee's using yeah. a brown screen. Yeah, John's using a gray screen. Well, I'm <laughs> using a screen so you can't see behind me. That's my screen. Band. He's in his van. <laughs> All right. Uh, <clears throat> I want to show you a cool thing real quick, and then we'll get to some chief stuff. Uh, um, share my screen again. Where to go? <clears throat> okay. There you go, Kevin. I got a green screen. There we go. Hey, um, <laughs> so, so here we go. I'm about to uh, be creative here. Um, this is what it looks like. This is what a computer looks like before it's put together, <laughs> fresh from the store. So I'm about to put this together to bring to the summit. And uh, I'm pretty excited about it. So I've got uh, got a few things here. We've got the uh, good old uh, 4090 that we'll be throwing into the machine. I managed to get my hands on one of those. I've got Fancy. the new I got the new iCore 9 24 core Intel uh, unlocked uh, processor. Is that 24 threads or 24 core? Core. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah, it's a bunch. So uh, we're paying we'll you too much. <laughs> no, not enough. Um, uh, let's see. I've got two terabytes of hard drive. I've got uh, an eight gig, eight terabyte um, regular drive. I've got. Uh, you just said two no, terabytes of hard sorry, drive, but you did the RAM. 64, <laughs> 64 gig of RAM. Yeah. Eight, eight uh, terabyte hard drive, two terabyte of solid state. That'll be the main drive. Nice. Um, Going to the new thousand uh, watt power supply. That's an intelligent power supply, whatever that means. Hopefully, it'll make me a little smarter. Uh, we've got the super chilled, water cooled system, so it'll keep it nice and every, all these hot components cool. Uh, I'm excited. I'm going to go upgrade to the uh, Corsair keyboard. I'm going to a mechanical keyboard. I'm going to give it a try. My kids have been on me about this, and yeah. I thought, I'm going to try it. And I've got the Corsair nice mouse here. to go with it. So uh, I'm pretty excited about that. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I, I end up touching too many keys all the time. So we'll see if the mechanical keyboard helps with that at all. Uh, all right. So when what I... Uh, going to put that together for you is the next question. Me and All right. <laughs> I, I, I love putting computers together. But my son, Ethan... Um, he's a computer nerd too, and he will be doing most of the work. So, uh, he's all over this stuff. He's built computers for other people and, and it'll be a ball. I'm looking forward to it. I, and, I like uh, this comment, Dan, I'm just pinning this up. Sorry. I am interrupted yep, you yep. for a second, but I have an odd angled house I'm working on when I try to connect some walls, they just put out into space. Um, I, uh, I think we should get a, um, a chief experts dropbox so people can just drop this stuff in on the fly yeah, that's probably a good idea we'll figure that out get that going because i don't quite understand the question and yeah. um you need to see an example or yeah more info. that would help a lot uh, if, it, if it's an acute angle sometimes the walls just take off unless you break them and bring them back around if it's yeah. obtuse then it doesn't but if it's acute so I don't know if that's what they're talking about or not, but I don't know. So yeah, if you want to open, the, if you want to give us a little bit more information on that, that'd be great. Um, and we'll try to get into that. Ethan Ashby's got the same card. He says I'll be happy. Um, cool. All right, let's. Uh, I wanted to. Sh let's. let's oh, what do you want to do? We got some questions here. Uh, yes, there was a couple questions. Uh, I have a foundation plan stem wall issue that my buckouts show nicely, but I cannot see see the stem wall beyond the buckout. What is a buckout? It's a good question. I don't, I don't know, know what a buckout term. is. John, can you tell us what a buckout is? Um, it's the. Uh, I think he's talking about when you when you have a, a pony wall, you can set it so that you can either see the top wall or the bottom wall or both. Oh, on the that's floor an, plan? Oh, that's that's the the show. On the plan? On the plan. Okay. So let's go take a peek at that quick. Um, I'm going to turn that off, John. So when we get yep. a pony wall, let's just do this real quick. Let's create a pony wall. 
and under pony wall let's get something that's a little larger i'm going to make that bigger so it sticks out more i'll make it 12 inch again i have no idea if this is the right question or not um or if, I, if i'm even on the right track let us know if i'm not on the right track so yeah so, so you want i think he's talking about not being able to see the bottom of that wall in plan view in plan view yeah. okay yeah so so which you can freeze in that dialogue yes so that's there, yeah right? thank you yeah thank you um <laughs> sorry here, here you go Box so is part of the forms around an opening plan view so plan this what view, it right looks, that's what there it's going to go. look like so notice how i clicked on this up here so we can see what Doug, it's going to look Doug's like right. in the different Doug's kinds right. of views okay so all you have to do is go here and display what do you want to display in plan view okay default is going to do both um, upper lower so you can show whatever you want upper with the both with the fill okay and there they both are with the fill turned on for both of them so you do have a lot a lot of options with that gotta remember in the day we used to have to draw cad boxes to be able to show the the bottom wall or a ledge or something like that it was a ton of extra work but you know we got her done so this, this is a little bit nicer i hope that so, answered the question so part of the part more of the question is i believe is when you when you're going through a foundation wall you can make the opening for in the foundation wider than the actual door okay like an extra six inches or something like that so it's a one surface for the door to go into but oh like like cutting out for a garage oh they sure cut out for a garage stem wall okay yeah I, I think i understand what they're asking there let's go whoops wrong camera let's go bring up a view <clears throat> so there's our wall and we want the casing to be in line with the upper wall right so uh so when you put a door in there right now the casing kind of looks like it's behind the block so that's a setting in the um i think it's under moldings or which is what's it under casing and we want to tell it to be enlarged on the double wall options I'm pretty sure that's the setting we're looking for and if we click okay it should push that pony wall back and it's not why not because that's not a double wall it's a single wall it's a foundation uh, like this, setting is a, the foundation. This, is, this is not a double wall option uh, right. thank you yeah this is a pony wall situation is this a bug in chief I don't remember. No, I think it's in the that. foundation settings. You have to do it. All right. There is a setting there where you, like when you're in a garage, you can tell it to make the foundation opening wider. Add add for the foundation rough opening. Probably under framing. Possibly, yeah. Let's go to that. Where to go? Where's my framing? Oh, it's going to be in the door. Duh. Yeah, in the door. Thank you. Um, under framing. We're going to go, what, trimmer, king stud, uh, bottom sill. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. I know it's there somewhere. Um, and I, only got, I only got one in, screen, so I can't you're go. talking about the rough screen. opening um, panel? Oh, yeah, that's right. We've got that new panel um, each side. Add, add for concrete. Add for concrete. Cut out. Cut out. Okay. There. Let's try adding three inches. And now go to plan view is what he wants. Okay, so yeah, there it's better in 3D. It's still not wrapping the sheetrock around like I want it to, but on the floor plan, it should look better now. Um, so if we're showing, yeah, see how that's showing like that, although it's still not carrying that through. I wouldn't, would I do this like this? You would if you had a an eight inch foundation wall with a six inch. You know, I would inch. not do it like this, John. I would not put the wood again. I would not. This wouldn't be part of one wall. Right. Th this is going to be a furred wall. And the only thing that's going to be part of the pony wall is the wood wall on the top and the concrete block. Right. All right. This would be added as a separate wall that I would adjust the height. And I could I could even put a cap on it if I wanted to. And you'll get much better results from that. You so, still would probably have to go in and set that setting for the cutout for a concrete. Yeah, let extra me go. cutout for a concrete. Let yeah, it go. sounds like they're actually talking about like almost like a door, a hatch access. Well, that would be the same kind of a deal. Yeah. Um, so you're gonna uh, yeah, you're gonna adjust that. So I, I turn in this case, I turn the, I get rid of the stuff on top of the concrete, 
And then I'm going to go add another wall. It's going to be a furred wall. So let me just go add a wall. I'll yeah, just I'm, I'm going to pin this. This is this is what. Yeah, that's what I'm getting at right there. At. Yeah. yeah. So what I would do there, I have a wall type that I use furred wall with an air gap. So if we look at how I create that, um, I create a little air gap um, framing and sheetrock. So when I put that against the concrete wall, it, at the air gap, the, the furred wall needs to touch the other wall. Okay. So when I push it against there, it slides right into it real nice. And then what I could do here at the end here is I can wrap that around. So it'll finish the sheetrock out for me really nicely. Okay. So that works really well. And then I go into a 3D view. And then I just pull the top of this down. All right. To the right height. And then I get the kind of wall that I want. All right. So. Or you could make it a railing. and Yeah. Also, yeah. Looks like I need to make that rough opening thing a little bit bigger here or something. I'm not sure why it's yeah. not wrapping properly. It usually does just fine there. Um, well, that's not doing very well on the outside. That's not working at all. Remember uh, when I told bigger. you you've been on fire lately? <laughs> hmm? That's that's kind of the cutout's working anyways, the three inch. The cutout is working, but that's not what I want in this situation. <laughs> right. So, uh, yeah. Uh, or do I? I think it would be. I'd want an inch and a half, maybe. Yeah. But any bigger for the for the casing. Um, I can't. Whatever you would have on the out inside, you would have to have on the outside. Yeah. For a, for a concrete wall. Show and plan. So, inch and a half. It's a little better. Okay, then I would need to adjust my wall. Okay, I think this will work. Mm -mm -mm. Let's see if that works. Ah, I flew away. Where I go? Start over. Here's another way to do it. You could know break I that. You could break that wall on both sides of the door and make it just take the stem wall away from it. There you go. That would work too. That's probably the easier way to do it. Just make this piece of the wall its own its own make, wall type. Exactly. Its own two yeah. by six wall. It's two yep. by six all the way up. Or um oh you know the other what you could do also is just do this, add a break here and here, and pull this down. Then your door's in the break. Why didn't I think of that? that so, yeah. so now you would just put your door in that opening, and you can just you can adjust the break wherever you want it to be. Yeah, mm. it's probably going to be as easy as anything. That might have some issues too, but somewhere in that mess of uh, explanations, the answers there. <laughs> There's, there's, there's only 10 different ways to do it. We just that's right. Get, get the best one that's kind of close to what we want. But right. I, this is how I used to do that now that I think about it. And then I can also go in here and, and pull this concrete down so that I can have the concrete footing run down. Yeah, I pulled the full floor down. Um, I don't have a footing on that either. That might be part of the problem. So under foundation, you do have to have that checked. So And his question had to do with plan view. So... How does that uh, yeah so break getting it? it to show up in plan view so breaking the wall would definitely make it show up in plan view yeah this don't the way you just did it pulling it down would not make it show up in plan view right oh yeah okay let's move on we spent too much time on that i hope that was somewhat helpful so, evidently um, it wasn't the right we're, we weren't focused on the right question i don't um, know what they were asking yeah anyway <laughs> By the way, guys, whenever we do a Q&A session like this and you have some of those kind of questions, feel free to, you know, email me ahead of time or, you know, send me the plan or send me an image of what you're trying, what, what you want to accomplish. In fact, you can do that now if you want. If you have an image and you want to email Dan at ChiefExperts.com, I have my email open right in front of me. Just put a note that you emailed me because otherwise I won't look at my email. All right. We got another question, right? Something easier to ask uh, or answer. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. 
John, uh, John said we need a Dropbox. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to set one up for us. Yeah, that would be or nice. Can, either way. Yeah, we'll figure something out for that. Anybody? All right, we'll go spin the damn wheel then. Yeah, spin the wheel. <laughs> All right. Um, the design guy. Yes, you can send me a something. Who's the design guy? Barely see that picture. I think I, I recognize know. him though. I do too. Uh, I should know this. The design guy. What's your name, design guy? Itty bitty picture. <laughs> it is Monday, right? Um, okay, let's go spin the wheel. I haven't done this for a while. All right, I got some new things on there. Oh, they are uh, new. Look yeah, at that. <laughs> yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. I was ready for you. All right, here we go. See what pops up today. <clears throat> See if Kevin can get him. Yeah, let's, let's <laughs> come on, Kevin. The Wheel of Topics. That's the one I was hoping it would land on. You are. That is the settings uh, for your Aldo. That's the uh, no, that's the ship the thing on a ship, right? Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Settings for choice. Aldo. <clears throat> so that is actually in a few different spots in Chief, but there. Oh, they use right it a couple there. times, huh? Yeah. So there it is, right there. Okay, and that particular icon says it's this one, um, and that turns that's for your um, your tool palette that you have here. So when you click on that, you get some options. You get grid view or list view, or fit the palette. So if I switch to grid view, um, it's going to look just like that. If I switch to list view, it's going to put the icons with their name there. So now you can kind of see what the icons are. So whenever you click on any other icons that have child icons, you'll see the child icons with their name displayed. And for I always recommend for newer users of Chief, this is really a great way to, to get started, to start understanding what some of those icons are. Just keep it like that and you'll be good to go. Uh, once you get to a point where you don't need that anymore, go to grid view. And now you can do it like that. If you make the column wider, you, your grid will look a little different, but you're going to you know, give up real estate for your plan. So you might kind of want to keep it narrow. Um, so that works really well there. Um, if that gets turned off for some reason, because maybe you've clicked on the uh, icon up here, the little close that thing icon, which happens, the button, whatever you want to call it. Um, it's under view and it's called tool palette. So that's what you're looking for right here. And that'll turn it on and off on the side of your screen. All right. If it's all messed up and you just don't know what the hell happened, go to preferences, reset options, reset side windows. And that'll set, that'll reset all of your side windows. Okay. Since we have that icon up, will you go through the different Aldo options that people might not know about? Aldo. What is Aldo? Uh, your active layer display options next to your library and project browser. The stuff? Yeah. So okay. your, uh, the one down, there you go. Yeah, um, this, this is the one yeah, for layers. That. This is one I think a lot of people miss because um, this is for your active layer display. And there's some really cool settings you can do here. But when you, when you click on the little icon up here to turn on the layers, okay, that opens this window. And you can then do everything you want to your layers in your plan. This icon right here does the same Minimize thing. Minimize the project browser for a second so we can see, so we can get rid of the project browser. Oh, I don't have this one open. Thank you. There you go. Um, so when I click on it over here, turn that on, it turns on my layer display here. And again, we have that same little, you call it an elbow, um, same little wheel icon down here um ship steering wheel <laughs> so i always recommend to people just turn on the first five buttons just put check marks in the first five do not check the last one show all layers because the cool thing about having just the first five is when you click on something in your plan it only shows the layers for the items that you've clicked on in your plan and that gives you more control it's easier to find things there if you turn that last one on then you get all of them all the time. It doesn't matter what you click on. It's always the whole list. So leave that last icon checked off. And then what I like to do is on the columns, I just turn them all on. That way I have the same exact layer display 
that I have at the top of the screen when I click that button at the top on the top toolbar. I can do anything I want to all the layers right here. So it, it's really nice. Um, I use this. I don't use this as much as I should because I'm so I'm just so used to always just having this open um, or have, you know, using that one probably because I grew up with Chief before they had any of this stuff in here. Uh, but this really is handy. So when I do a DWG import or something like that and I'm looking at layers and changing layers and turning layers on and off, I will use this side one a lot for that. But it really is handy. So that, John sent you an email. Okay. Let me go look for it. And the, the, the design guy sent one too. So, but okay. Oh, it's oh, all that's Ken. To, Ken, I'm to, sorry. I should yeah, know you're Ken the design laughing. guy. Um, looks like Ken's they're trying to reference a um, a top floor onto the foundation level, to showing the the cutout for the wall, which would okay. just literally be creating a layer set with no, no doors I, and only walls. I, I don't think that's what they're doing. They're when you well, when you put a door into a concrete wall, you have to make it bigger, and then you you put a stud or two studs in there for the door to sit on. So, I think if I if I understand it right, breaking the wall and putting it, taking the stem wall out of it or the pony wall out of it, is going to be the best way to show that. I agree because <clears throat> when you break the wall, you're able then to use a two by six wall or whatever else, which is going to give you exactly. wooden framing, which is the buck. Yep. That's what he's looking for so, is to be able to see that. And that's why you so, want to reshape reshape the wall like I was showing you. Break it and pull the pull it down. It's going to be. But then you don't get it. But then it doesn't it doesn't show right in plan view. Should yeah. I mean, I've got it showing footing here, and I remember I broke it right through here. <coughs> He's not looking for the footing. He's looking for the framing member that would create the doorway right. in a concrete wall. So if you want, if you want a single stud on each side of the door inside the concrete, you would make the that wall three inches longer than the rough opening of the door, and have yeah, an inch and a half of it on each side of the door. Yeah, it's going to look like that. Of course, the door is in the wrong place. I should probably adjust that. Um, but yeah, and the framing can go here and you can move the framing wherever you want. Um, I just want the stem wall below to show below under the buck out. Here, let me get to that plan. Here's a picture of it. All right. Come on here. Show stem wall under in plan view under door. Show stem wall. Stem wall. Show the footing or stem wall. All right, let's do another question. Let's do another spin the wheel again up on this. Just trying to understand and then it. see if he can clarify it some more in his text. Yeah, yeah. JT, a little bit more info, please. Um, sorry. Um, Ken, I can't get uh, my OneDrive is incorporating. Can you just zip that plan up and send it to me? I'm not seeing what you've sent me. I don't think. No, I'm not for some reason. All right, I'm going to go spin up the wheel. Sorry, guys. So there's a stem. Here we go. This, there's a stem wall down to the footing. There you go. So the stem wall to the footing. And what's the stem wall? That's the foundation stem wall. Or the, I, I looked at the file. I, I really need people to bubble and make a note and show exactly what we're even talking about. It looked like the file that was sent to me from Ken was there. He's using a wall reference okay. um, to show a, a hash line from a wall below with a with a door cut out. So I don't, but I don't know what the end look is supposed to be. This Just is go go show us Dan how how you change what shows in the on the on the plan view where you where you change what shows the. The top wall plus the stem wall. Well, again, that's wall. under the under wall types, under display and plan view right here. Wall types, display and plan view. Here's what you can show for those different things. Now that doesn't have anything to do with the footing. That's just the wall itself, the pony wall itself. Okay. Yeah. So this is for a pony wall condition. Right. You could the show the, the upper wall and lower wall together. Right. So if I right. wanted to show all of the everything, I could turn that on, and now it's going to look like that, where you see whatever hatching I have in all the walls. And then again, I always do my 
my uh, framed and sheetrock walls inside separately as separate walls and you make those a the one thing i forgot to check in when i did these was call them under um that's a good meter structure you got to tell them to be furred walls that's super important that you if you don't check that you're going to confuse the hell out of the program and what you're trying to do so that's really important so once you do that it should it should work just fine and you won't have those issues like we were having with that when i was trying to break or trying to do some other things so let me let me just do it again all right so whenever i'm doing these kinds of buildings where i have you know you got a lookout okay so you've got a window and a door and <clears throat> let me just get rid of this all right and let me just reset that wall back to the to original shape so right now i've got it pulled down let's go to um okay i guess it's going to be like that i can't reset that so when i go in here and do this <clears throat> and again often you have a footing you know it might be deeper all the way down or the footing might might come like this all right because you know you got to walk up right there's all sorts of different reasons why you do things so you're going to break the wall you're going to adjust it to the right height you're going to hit your three key and break the wall wherever the door is going to be you're going to pull this down you're going to break the bottom part of the wall and you're going to pull those footings down and then what i always do here is open the wall and turn on under foundation, I turn on um, vertical footing. That'll put the footings coming up along the side here. Okay, so that'll, you know, for your walkout. And then click OK. And now I've got the right configuration. Now I put my door in and then I make those adjustments of where this should, where the framing should be against that door. And that's typically how I do it. And then what I always do on the inside there is I'm going to do a cross section through the inside using back clip and I'm going to pull that this bottom part right to the top of the concrete floor. Of course, I don't have a concrete floor in here because I'm on the first floor. Typically, we'd be doing this in the basement in the lower level. And then I would form my walls on top of it. So, but if you look at the floor plan, it's going to look fine. It's going to show the footings. I can turn those uh, steps off in the layers. That's a layer setting. If you don't want to see the S's for the, where the footing step, just go to layers and turn that off. Yes, no. Could, couldn't you do an extend below? What's an extend does, below? Does that, does that work for foundations? Extend below, what is that? Um, is it in the same place where you can extend it to a ceiling, a wall? I've never used it, so I'm not sure exactly. It, Isn't that a that's a roof option? Thing. Isn't that a roof thing? Uh, it's also a between floors thing. Okay, but I don't know if that's available for foundation walls I'm or anything sure. like that. I've never, you're, are I've, you on a foundation I've, or you're on the first? You're on I'm the on the first floor. floor. I mean, I'm doing this all on the wrong floor, first of all. Right. So that's yep. part of the problem. Um, but it should look just like this when you're done in the basement. Of course, my footings probably should be bigger because my footing wall is right here. Um, so this footing should be bigger that way. And you right. can offset that. All right. Well, we've got further questions. Anybody? Uh, nothing, nothing new yet that I see. Nobody, but nobody has questions today. Must be nice. <laughs> okay, we'll go spin the wheel. Um, so Ken and JT, thanks for that. Um, we'll, we'll keep trying to help you out. What the heck was that? My old <laughs> your wheel. Fun oh, jeez. It was Google just decided to speak to me all of a sudden. That's weird. All right, let's spin her up. Um, all right. What is that one again? Do you guys remember? Uh, yeah, that's um, that's in I, layout. I actually, believe. I thought I'd turn that one off. Um, <laughs> that's it's not supposed to be there. But what is that one again? It's these pan scale layout view. Yeah, we covered yeah. that last week. I thought I got rid of that one. All right, my bad. Let's spin it again. That's when you can click on a layout viewport and move the image around inside the viewport. 
This is one. Uh, you guys know what that one is? Yeah, this is um, connected broken wall. What is that? Um, wall connection. <clears throat> gotcha. Uh, <laughs> is it an off angle wall? Yeah, you got it, John. Uh, boy. Nice, nice job. Atta boy. Let's go show what that does. Uh, it's it's one of those little things you probably don't even notice when you're drawing with Chief. But when you draw a wall, I'm just going to hold my uh, control key down so I'm drawing it without an angle snap. And when I draw it and it's not a seven and a half degree or wall, see how that icon appears there? It's, oops. Ah. I had to zoom when I shouldn't have. But when I click this, um, I don't get that here. It doesn't show up anywhere. It's just an informational icon. So it's just going to show you that as you're drawing this wall. Of course, now why isn't it doing it? Um, did it before. What the hell? All right. Why is it not showing now? Oh, there it is. Okay. Oh, there it is. So it shows up after I drew the wall. So if I click on the wall now, I get this option. So it's just telling me that oh, the wall is off angle. Although if I click on it, yeah. So whenever, so it's 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 always on my toolbar now. So that's just telling me there's an off angle wall somewhere. So I need to go into this informational thing, fix it, ignore it, or ignore all off angle walls. It's one of those little naggy icons. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now I can have an off angle wall and it turns that off. <clears throat> Chief assumes you always want to have walls that are seven and a half degrees, 15 degrees. Um, you could go set additional angles under this icon right here. This icon right here allows you to do additional angles. So if you have to draw a bunch of additional angles that aren't seven and a half degrees, you can put those angles in here. And then you won't get that warning message when you're drawing those angle walls. Okay. Doug, Doug has a little tidbit here about uh, insulated, getting your footings down so that they're protected from frost. Um, instead of lowering the footings, the exterior walls and footings can be insulated with EPS insulation to protect from frost. If anybody's interested and doesn't know about that yet, uh, just Google shallow insulated footings. Yeah, I've seen that. And, and it's a great way to do I've done half a dozen of them that way, and it works yeah. really good. It's, uh, let's see if I can show something. So if you, why is it doing that? So if you have a footing here, you're saying that you can, um, you do your shallow footing and then you're laying out foam. Yep, you insulate down inch and a half or two inches or whatever, and then mm -hmm. out. And whatever distance you go out, down and out, um, those two added together below the grade will get you the same distance down. Really? Okay. The, the, the research, I guess, showed that frost goes underneath a building at a 45 degree angle. Oh, okay. I've never known that. I've never tried those. <clears throat> Interesting. University of Minnesota, University of Michigan, Canada, up in Canada, they've done research on that stuff. Oh, and it's cool. actually in the code now. So all the rigmarole. Can you help me out here. Where's the benefit in that? Uh, cost savings. You're not putting your foundation as deep. You're just instead of oh. going down four feet with a foundation, you're using four feet of two inch expanded polystyrene or extruded extruded polystyrene. That's fascinating. All right. Yeah. Huh. So Vicky's having a good time. We're here. We are here to entertain Vicky. So. <laughs> I think no one knows what was being asked because everybody was talking about something different in the chat. I know. I know. Yeah. So I too. We'll maybe figure that out someday. I saw that picture, uh, and that's something we covered. We covered the concrete cutout for okay. add rough opening to each side right. pin. Yeah. So yeah. Like and I said, somewhere somewhere in there was the answer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but where? But where? Uh-huh. <laughs> um, all right, hang on here. All right. Spin her up again. I thought he was talking about overlaying just the door opening on top of a foundation with footing plan, which I could show you how to do very easily. But that's right. apparently not what we're talking about either. <laughs> Walk through. 
a walkthrough. Sweet. Renee, this is what you get to shine on right now. Um, oh, I do? <laughs> you do. I put this. You had in. a cute. I saw you had that cute. Yeah, I, it's in there. And the thing about that is uh, Renee just posted in our group online. Uh, let's see where to go. I deleted it's it off right my here. machine by accident yesterday. Oh, oh no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you Oops. can't get her back? No. So if you go to our Facebook pay, uh, group, um, and you've posted it in some of the other groups as well. Yeah. Um, this is really phenomenal what you've done here. This is all done with Chief. And let's see how do I get this up? Can I get this off of here? We'll go full screen. There we go. This is all done with Chief Architect, guys. Yeah. This is something Renee just posted. Was it yesterday or the day before? Yeah, and you come come to the summit, and we'll go over this in detail if you want to. Yeah, you'll even show them how to walk through with your 3D goggles, right? Yeah. Do you, can you, with the 3D uh, walk through? I haven't can messed you, with it, honestly. You haven't I, messed with it? No, I, okay. I work in 3D, but I haven't worked in Chief's 3D. See, I'm interested to know in 3D if we can do this kind of quality with the walkthrough goggles with the new hardware. Um, so that'd be interesting. I kind of doubt it, but uh, uh, it's going to look more like the, just a plain old 3D rendered view. Uh, we played with it in Vegas about five, six years ago, John. Was yeah. That, it was yep. really cool. It was really cool. I, you, I almost were, fell down. <laughs> yeah, you were walking up the stairs and you... Uh, Look, looked back and saw my foot wasn't on the steps and I almost fell. I know. <laughs> I, I climbed up on the roof and got up on top of the chimney and looked down and I got dizzy because it was so high up. Yeah. It was pretty cool. Anyway, um, so tell, there, uh, you wanna... there's a few things in here that I have for free on my website, like that Wayne's the paneling, Wayne's coding. Okay. And what I use to create that. That's that's for free on my site. Um, there's a couple symbols in there that are for free. Rabbit design dot dot net. Dot yeah. Net. I've been okay. trying to get dot com. She won't give it up. R A B B I T T. Two B's, two T's. Yeah. Dot net. Rabbit design dot net. Um yeah. Yeah, this was not twin motion, that's chief. Um, yeah. So we're getting there, guys. We're getting there. Chief has come a long way. Um, you want to talk a little bit about how you did that? Does anybody want to know how he did that? Um, the, the um, basic the basic method? Well, this is all about lighting, properly lighting the scene so you can set your sample rate low enough yeah. so that you're not rendering all day and all night. You see there's still a problem in that corner, that I top see that. corner. Oh, I issue. thought maybe there was some light cove there. Yeah, I have to do some some kind of post-processing to get rid of that, or okay. I don't know. I didn't even spend time messing with it. But sure. um, And then some of the tools I sell are used to create some of those items in there. But the, in terms of the walkthrough, um, we can do a, a... Well, I'll just show a real quick basic on how you do it. You um, yeah, create a walkthrough path. Yep. And that's, you're going to draw a line on where you want the path to go. Okay. And then, then we can uh, open that line. Let's see, we've got some buttons down here. You can, we can look at keyframes. We, we can do the walkthrough preview, which will open. Let's close this. Now we can see what the preview looks like. This is something they added that's new. Um, so we can, this is what it's going to render out looking like. Um, See, how do you add the, oh, I guess I changed the length of it, didn't I? Yeah. So there we go. So now I can go like that. So how do you change the keyframes? Uh, you In your edit toolbar, you can add a keyframe. So it's the um, fourth from your Over right here. down at yeah. the bottom. Oh, no, you can add it uh, right from the toolbar, your edit toolbar. Right. Uh, fourth um, from the right, two, two to your left. This one. There you go. Yep. yep. You tell I don't, do a, I don't do a lot. And when you add a keyframe, you might want to add a keyframe so that you're orienting your camera in a different way. Um, so you just click in your line and that'll. Oh, that's it. right. Okay. Now yep. I remember. Yep. So I could grab that camera and move it and wrote. Oops. I can move the end of the line. I didn't want to do that. So let me. How do I get a hold of that camera? That blue handle. There you go. Yeah. And then and I can, yeah, rotate. can rotate that. And so when a camera gets to this point, it'll look over there and then come back and look that way. So again, we can preview that right here. So, so when we get to here, it's going to look over there to the other side a little bit and then back. See how it's changing its view. So we won't spend any more time on it. That's the basis of it. And then yeah, you then you would click on define in the active walkthrough. And um, we yeah, should, we could talk about this another time. I bet people don't use this, and it's a good it's a good method, especially well, com, you know coming up. Yeah, I'm hoping X15 will give us a little bit more. Uh, control over the file size that's been one big issue i mean 
you said that the 15 second one you created there on Facebook was 100 and or how many megabytes was that? 120. Oh no, that that no, it was only it was 22 megabytes. Oh the, no, that's the reasonable. file of that project was 160, I think, which not too bad considering I've got a lot of geometry and stuff in there. Uh, so Ethan says it crashes when he tries to do it. Hmm. Well, we'll have to take a look at that. Um, how are we doing here? Um, oh, I do have 80 gigs of RAM on my machine. So if RAM is someone saying RAM's a thing. That might have something to do with it because there's yeah. going to be a lot going on all at once. And Picture. I think 24 gigs of uh, VRAM. Uh, any way to actually sh to show the doors opening as you no, fly? No, we don't through? have any an animation yet. You you would have to you, what you'd have to do is have an your um, your walkthrough end here, and then start up again probably. Yeah, and, and then show it open at the, the end next. of this one. Open the door and start a new one, and then we'd have to use another program to stitch the two together. Yeah, still um, still no animation on yeah, it though. Yeah, yeah, it would be nice one day. Well, and I've been bugging Chiefs developers for those people that do take it to Twin Motion. Um, you can animate a door in twin motion but chief actually attaches the hardware from the 3d file to um to the door casing which i've been bugging them about that for a long time so you have to remove all your hardware if you want to animate it in a in a post software okay are you using the nvidia drivers uh what am i on yeah i'm using studio versions okay oh he's asking ethan probably yeah, I maybe, don't know what maybe using the game version. Oh, probably. yeah, that could be. Mm -hmm. I don't know what. Oh, instead of the gaming drivers, use the studio yeah. version. Um, and also, uh, some of the a lot of people have reported issues with the newest um, drivers from NVIDIA and they've had to go back a few. Mm -hmm. So, if you're having issues with crashing and ray tracing and stuff like that, you might need to go look that up on Chief Talk. It's pretty well known that they're having some issues with one okay. of the current driver sets. All right, cool. All right, let's do this. We're running a little behind here. Of course, I don't know what behind is so, right now. Alan had a question. Mm -hmm. Is it about a concrete cutout? No, no. <laughs> no. But John, John did send you a 3D view of what he's talking about. Did he? All right. Alan had a question about layout. So if you want to do this first and then come back to, to his question. Do this first? Okay, I can do that. Here, yeah. let, me, let me see this picture here. Um, While you're looking for that... Uh, Oh, that looks good, Chad. Just, uh, just for that foundation thing that we were talking about, just Google shallow insulated footing or shallow insulated foundation, and you'll get information on that. Okay. Um, so, I, what I'm wondering is what's not showing up correctly on the floor plan? Where those cut out, where that cutout is? Is that not what's showing up right? Because isn't that the, isn't that the question? I think so. Yeah. Okay. So JT, let us know if that's the question, because this is, that should happen automatically, shouldn't it? With the. It does with, when it's in a garage, it, it's, it shows up. Yeah, I'm not sure if it happens everywhere else. Um, all right, we'll come back to that. Um, swirl. What is swirl? <laughs> Nothing to do with chief architect. Um, if you change the I to a U and you go type swirl.com. You guys might enjoy this. It's a new way to search for things online. So if we go here and we search for um, Renee Rabbit, and it brings up. So here's Renee on Instagram. Here's Renee on LinkedIn. Here's Renee on YouTube. Oh, that's pretty good. Um, isn't that cool? Yeah. Uh, here's images, news. Hopefully there's no bad news out there. Um, <laughs> but and then over here is your tip, traditional Google type search. So it just, gives just showed you... an ex-girlfriend from 20 years ago. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, Jill Renee. Oh, that's no bad. No, I'm kidding. I was um, joking. <laughs> okay, good. Um, anyway, so there you go. That's, I just threw that on there because I learned about it the other day, and it's really cool. And I thought me like that. So swirl, S-W-U-R-L.com, and it takes you there. And uh, the other one is duckduckgo.com, which is kind of cool if you're looking for a, another search engine that uh, – protects your privacy and things like that um okay well, here i'm going to show my screen for a second Let's go ahead I, 
is going here? I'm just curious if this is, um, let's see. Not sure your screen. screen. I gotcha. Um, I don't know if this is the condition that we're talking about at all, but this is an upper wall type. This is a curb wall type. I've got a cutout from, from a reference display and this, and this is my footing. I don't know if that was the condition we were trying to do, but if I turn off the reference display, I just see my foundation wall and my footing. Then I've got a reference display that has walls only on that layer set. And so it's showing the opening for that door above. So it's giving the condition of having a curb that's cut and it's not a garage room. So I don't know if that's what they were trying to talk about. But so you did that with a reference layer. Yeah, reference layer to a, to a layer set that only had walls turned on. So that will show your openings. And then that's overlaid on top of my foundation plan. Yeah, I don't have the right kind of floor specified here to show that condition correctly. This would need to be a concrete floor and you need to have a curb to get that to show correctly on your floor plan. So when you have a garage, it's going to do that. Um, and it usually works fine. I used to just, I used to draw CAD boxes and put white fill in them. And then I would just, wherever the cutout was, I would just break the CAD box and pull that through. And that would be white then. Um, and that worked pretty well too. Uh, but this would actually be the concrete floor in the, in the garage. It seems like they've fixed that a little bit now for, to a certain extent. They got some of the things I suggested, but not everything. So getting a little closer on those garage floors now. Um, so the question today. about the, the question about the layout, wondering it's, it's your it's your basic way of getting the layout set up, Dan, where you just copy page the floor, same floor plan from one to one, to the next page. Wondering oh, about yeah. keeping the floors in the same place on the page. Sure, I'll get that in a second here. Uh, Ethan asks uh, the speeding up plans. Speeding up plans, what slows down a plan on your computer? Well, first of all, it's your hardware. Ethan, you have some pretty good hardware. So if he's you, got good hardware. No, he's you, been battling it for a while. If you got something slowing you down, uh, some of the things I've found that slow down a plan are lots of pictures imported into the plan, okay? Um, even when they're turned off. So start by deleting all those pictures. Um, purging all of the um, CAD, CAD blocks. blocks you don't need. So CAD block management. Oh, here, I'm not showing my screen. Let me show my screen. So that would be, um, so you want to clear out under CAD, um, CAD block management. You want to purge all the blocks. Well, Chief tends to do that automatically these days. So that's usually not an issue. Um, but anytime you, a, a CAD block is a group of CAD lines put to get, you know, grouped together. And once you create a CAD block, Chief puts that in your plan. Even if it's deleted, it'll still be there. Um, DWGs imported. Um, if you get a crappy DWG, I don't, I don't know what the difference between a good and a crappy DWG. Some of the DWGs I've seen that have little bitty lines for an arc. Um, you know, the computer is doing a massive amount of calculating to show that arc because it's got to show every distinct single little yeah. line. It's also um, Im important to note, is your slowdown happening in plan or is it happening in a 3D view? Are yeah. you are you tiling horizontal, you know, are you tiling a bunch of views across a bunch of screens? I would yeah. not recommend that yeah. on a complicated plan. Um, if you're producing a bunch of vector lines, like you said, not only in plan view, but if you're producing a bunch of vector lines from, say, um, using the tool to create a vector pattern file mm -hmm. from a material file, that's going to slow your plan way down, especially if you have it in an active 3D uh, window that's that's having to redraw 3D every time you drop in something new architecturally. That's an issue, too. Um, PDFs can uh, slow your plan down quite a bit, too, because when you think about what a PDF is, if you if you've got a CAD, if you got a PDF from another CAD program, and there's a lot of CAD information in there. Um, the, the the signal that gets sent to the PDF is the same signal that will get sent to the printer, and that can be a lot of math going on in that sync signal. So, uh, make the PDF a photo. Go to a JPEG. Go to PDF to JPG.net and convert it to a, a picture, 
sometimes that'll that that used to be a big issue it's not as much anymore but it used to be a really big issue with chief is those uh pdfs and all the all the math involved in displaying the pdf because there's it's not just a picture it's a bunch of math in that pdf file um so convert that to a picture um there's one more thing i was going to say i forget what it was now i had it in my head um about uh, uh slowing your plan the uh, plan slowing your computer down quite a bit uh shoot no i lost it well hopefully it'll come back but anyway yeah there's there's a whole bunch of different reasons that that I, your plan can slow down i have plans uh, oh, that oh i know what i was going to say if it does one of the best things you can do to minimize some of that issue is to go to um 3d view defaults and turn off auto rebuild wall floor ceilings and then turn off your auto rebuild terrain too if you have terrain in your plan because every time you do anything in your plan you touch and you open and close the door dialog chief's going to rebuild your whole 3d model it's going to regenerate all the math involved in that model so just turn that off and see how it works you have to remember to hit f12 every now and then especially when you bring up a 3d view to regen the 3d model and that one can help quite a bit that that doesn't stop the roofs from rebuilding though um so, so one of the things i do i have a, i have a client that does a lot of curved roofs so what i'll do with those is i'll bring just enough information into a new plan it could even just be a cad line marking the exterior of the building and draw my roofs in an, that are planned by themselves and then yeah copy yeah, and paste that. them into the i've done that before too yeah. um but there's usually a way um is there a way to do a maximum length on like fascia board what do they mean maximum length uh material list i think it's a material list oh, oh yeah someone said they wanted to start doing material lists um that is the topic we should dive into i haven't really gotten into material lists in chief um uh, it's just uh program has always been kind of goofy about material lists and i don't know if it's better or not i do know that yeah. if you if you do frame your plan correctly with the framing in chief with the framing tools you'll get a pretty good material takeoff if you've got the right materials specified on walls um, interior and outside on the roof anything with a surface count those are pretty accurate um, i think you can rely on those do not be um, don't be using the spray painting tool to change the material on something, expecting that you're going to get a good material list. Don't be, don't be doing that kind of a thing, because I'm probably going to get a material list for the siding, not the roofing here on this wall. Um, so if you're doing that, that's going to skew your material list quite a bit. Um, I wish Chief would give people a warning about that. that. People have a lot of plans using that function, or a lot of problems using that function. So. Uh I've got a, a you know broader look at material lists, especially if you've got a client that's asking you to do it. Um, I can count on one hand how many plans I've drawn in the last four years that had an accurate model. I just don't need it to produce yeah. a construction set. Yeah. So you've got to really you know be charging extra to create an accurate material list because you're going to be at needing to create an accurate model, uh, which yeah. oftentimes we don't need to do to create a plan set. Yeah, your wall your wall types are a big thing. You got to get the right wall types for every situation. Yeah, um, and you can't use any solids. No, they'll screw, right? They'll, you get nothing from it. I would charge thirty percent more on my contract if people ask me to do material lists. Like it's not it's worth my time. Money. I don't make well, margin on it because you'll end up doing some a bunch of it manually anyway. Yeah, so that's a given. Just keep in mind, if your material list isn't reporting correctly, too, we always have a components tab on any um, yeah. object or symbol in, in now, the plan. And you can... Schedules, on the other hand, those work. You know, if you're putting the right yeah. things in, you're putting the right info information in, you're going to get great schedules. So you can rely on those. Um, anyway, we're, we're getting, we're getting a closer question. to good material list. Okay, we're Here's running a good over. Yeah. But yeah, go ahead. And can you easy reset the materials if they've been sprayed over? Yeah, what you do is you go into, um, I think you got to be in a 3D view, if I'm not mistaken. And what you're going to do is click on, um, oh, how do I do this again? Um, the rainbow tool. And you're going to click on, no, it's not the rainbow tool. It is, ah, 
which one is it again? Um, if you just go to your 3D panel and go to plan materials, can't you? Uh, they showed, us, they showed me this there? in Coeur d'Alene. Um, hmm. No, it's not part of plan materials. He's talking about when you spray materials on the walls, typically you have to go under the wall and go to your, your materials and you have to choose default. Okay. So, but you have to do that one wall at a time with the right tool which is is it the spray tool um oh i know it is you go oh, to the spray tool you're right yeah choose, right. choose, yep. choose go to spray tool and hit use default click okay click on the entire plan right here okay for the entire plan and then click on a wall and that'll put all your walls back to the default Good material trick. Okay. Yeah, I asked that one because this is a function that always annoyed the hell out of me. And uh, yeah, they did fix that. So it does work. Um, so again, spray can. I'm sorry. Uh, eyedropper. Click. No, what did I do again? <laughs> what did I just do? Click on the material. Click on default. Yeah. I, I, spray can default. Click on what you want to change to back to the default. And that works well. All right. Um, that we'll layout. One, one or two. One or two more. Oh, the layout question. The layout question. Yeah. So when you're I doing agree. a layout, <laughs> what a day! It really is Monday somewhere. Um, so when we let me just open a sample plan. Um, let me go to this one. <clears throat> All right. Let's just go to a new page. And well, actually, let me go back to my floor plan here. Okay. So here's my floor <clears throat> plan. And I want to make sure all my floors line up and all of my different views line up. So you're going to click on, you're going to put the floor plan on there once, get it in the right place, hit the copy button, go to the page where you want to put it. In fact, if I go here and if I hit the, um, if I hit edit, paste and hold position, it'll put it in the same place. And I can continue to do that on more pages. Okay, so you can put it wherever you're going to have floor plans. Just put it on that many pages. Then you just go back to the viewport where you placed it, open its dialog box, and tell Chief what you want to have on that view. I'm going to put the foundation on this one. Done. So I've now it's lined up in the same exact place. Here I've got the first floor. Let me make another copy and put it on another page. Edit, paste, hold position. Um, I want this to be my electrical plan. So now I'm going to open the dialog box. I want the first floor. What do I want to show up in there? Um, I'm going to relink. No, we're not. Re yeah, we could relink it to the um, to the electrical plan and click OK. Click OK. So it's the first floor electrical plan. Now it's going to show up in that viewport, not the stuff. So now, again, everything's lined up. So use the edit, paste, hold position. Works great. I've actually added that to my toolbar, which I didn't have turned on. There we go. So I always put those buttons on all the different kind of pages that I work on in Chief. So you always, that's a tool that, I don't know why Chief doesn't put that on their default toolbar. It's a tool that should be there. You use it all the time. <clears throat> all right, one more question. Um, Norman had a follow-up. Was it Norman or uh, how do you identify when you were talking about changing the materials back? How do you identify mm -hmm. if it's changed? Um, you would have to go to um, click on a wall or click on the item that you you were putting the material on. If it says the word default in the title of the material, you got to go to the material tab. That means it's whatever was set up under the wall type. Okay, so whatever was set up here is the default material. And if it says the word default under the material, then it is then it is the right material. You could click on it and see too. That's the same material. That's how you can tell. So you could do the same technique by group selecting a bunch of walls and then open the dialogue. And if this is available, just, just go to the materials, select material and select use default. That's kind of the key. But yeah, that one gets a lot of people. 
When you build a second level for only one area or build a roof or garage only, for example. Well, when you build a second floor based on the existing floor that you have. So when you go to your floor tools and you build a new floor. Can I, can I ask a clarifying question first? Yeah. Um, are you talking about framing? How do you frame it? Or you... anyway, that's that's a question. So go ahead, Dan. Yeah, I, I'm assuming it's just to build a second floor for a certain area. This, but... this feels like it's an interior design centric question. Could be just looking for a roof over one area or something. That could be. So um, no framing. No framing. So go go ahead. <laughs> I'll put you guys on mute. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so if you only I've want that, that to be a the, long time ago. <laughs> if you only want that to be the second floor, when we're in chief. And we drive a second floor from the first floor. Again, make sure that you um, you, you can move the roof to the new part if you want to. That's a new setting. I haven't seen that one before. Um, if you have ups and downs in your floor, like a split level, make sure you check that in. And then when I click OK, Chief's going to make an outline of the whole floor below. I mean, that's just what it does. It's going to get all the outside walls. I could do reference and just pull this wall back. And now I've got just the part over that that I want. I could get rid of this by just deleting that and get rid of this room. Of course, the roof's going to be in the wrong place now, but I have to go back and adjust that. That's a um, simple answer to that. And again, this isn't going to look right because the roof is covering that, and these are now attic walls, not regular walls. So I get room definition here, but not here. So there's a little bit of things to be aware of when you're doing this stuff. Uh, but that's really the only way you can do it. The other thing you can do if you want to is, and I do this quite a bit on different projects. So I'm in, so I'll go back to my plan and I'll create a blank second floor, build a new floor, make it blank, click OK, click OK. <clears throat> and then I'll go back down here, just like I did on the layout page. I'll copy the, the things that I want to have on the second floor, go up here, paste hold position. Now I could copy a whole, everything go. from the first floor to the second floor. I do oh, that. I, I would say watch that again. He did it very quickly, but he yeah, copied I do, his I, old I, position on the next floor. Yeah, I do that all the time. So again, create a blank second floor. Go back to your first floor. Select what you want. Go up to the second floor. Paste whole position. And that'll save you a ton of time. You know, I've done, I've got apartment buildings I've done where all the units are basically the same on every floor. You finish one floor. Copy paste up to the next blank floors. You're done. Um, all right, we're way oh, over. Well, here's a here's a clarification thing. I just want okay. to build a second floor for the garage and a roof. When I go to build the second level, it is erasing all the level I, I did on the plan and not building a level yeah. on the garage. Just use what he just said, which is the, you know copy your your walls you want to transfer up and then paste hold position. Yeah, and you could you know you could even do that to the roof too. So if I went here and I could select parts of the roof and I could copy those up here and I go back down here and delete those. <clears throat> and then I would just, um, <clears throat> then I could just go into the roof up here and just open their dialogue and raise them up eight feet or six feet or 10 feet or whatever the number is. And they'd be in the right place. So I just yeah. block like, the pitch. You and can't, say, you can't do that though. If they're different pitches and stuff, you need to use transfer and replicate to move them up. If, you, if you're going to do them all at once. Huh. If, they're different, if they're different pitches. Oh, well, when you select them, put them back together and them. stuff. Yeah. I mean, with any roof, you're always going to have all those things. So anyway, um, Doug says, great guy, great session, guys. Thanks. And I think we'll call it there. Was it? Um, <laughs> Yeah, we, we had a we had a we had a tidbit or two in there, and hopefully everybody got a smile out of what we were doing today. So, I did. We were. Trying. I did. We were trying, man. Anyway, check it out. Check out our summit. Love to have you there. We will actually give really good information there. Um, we're just showing you how not to do it. Kevin, thanks for being here. I know you weren't involved too much, but it was uh, fun to have you uh, in our meeting, and we look forward to Appreciate doing it. more things together with you. And, uh, I, I was glad he's here because I'm usually at the bottom of the stack and all the comments cover my face. So yeah, I like that. Face instead. Oh, you know, see? I can That's move, a step. Yeah, we can <laughs> move you guys around wherever you want. Can you guys move, your, you guys can move yourself around, I think. Hey, I'll be in Vegas. Who's there? 
T Smith. Who's T Smith? I'll be there. Cool. You See, it's should... covering my face. <laughs> 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 well, we'll go like this, then you won't be so bad. Uh, yeah. Um, and then you got to do this. There's a story of a. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys. Um, Kevin, you can stay on if you want. Uh, everybody else, you guys have a great weekend. We'll see you next time. This is Dan and Chief Experts and everybody else. So thanks. We'll see ya. Bye.